All right, welcome back to Assassin's Creed Rogue. We um, left off going to see Liam on the docks over here. So that is exactly what we're going to do. That will start our next uh, current mission. So, um, yeah, without further ado, here we go. Where to? Whatever Templar affairs lead us. Liam, it's not like you to set out without a plan. Plan or no plan, we choose our own battlefield. And hey, we're not most at ease when we're at sea. Right you are. Let's set sail. brings us closer to the artifacts. So Achilles tasked you with this mission? No. He tasked me to task you. You need to find what was stolen from Mac and Dalshay. You have to recover the precursor box and manuscript. This is your mission. And what's yours? <laughs> Watch your arse. Achilles doesn't really trust me, does he? Give it time, Shay. Do this for him. For us. And you'll do much more than earn his trust. Liam. Do you know what Achilles writes about? I see him in his office all the time, bent over his papers. He keeps records and accounts, studies what little is known about the pieces of Eden. And of course, he corresponds with assassins on other continents. Of course. Liam, you can be a right horse's arse when it comes to assuming everyone knows the same as you. I cannot help if Achilles wants me to be familiar with our counterparts in Europe and elsewhere. Said like his favorite son. Connor's his favorite and only son. Then Achilles is heir. Connor may inherit the house, but you'll be mentor. We'll see. Whatever you say, Prince Regent of the Assassins. You call me that again. I'll throw you in the ocean. Almost got caught there at the last minute. All right, let's get to this destination. That's the rise of Tots! Drive us off the way! Now we're safe for sure! My girl! Trust me, you will sell those lobster by the tongue in France. Ah, the cabbage farmer has returned. About time. We have a lead on that curious manuscript. I'd be surprised if you can read it. No one can read it, imbecile. This is why the Templar are taking so long with it. But one of our allies has caught a glimpse of their work. A pirate? A spy who worked with the pirate. We set sail for Anticosti. That should prove a good test for this floating cesspit you call a ship. How trustworthy are the pirates? I consider them brothers, Shay. When the time comes, they will lend aid and help us fight the Templars. If only the Rus Beef would realize that Templars were pulling their strings. Are the Templars truly in control in the colonies? Not quite, but their influence reaches far and wide. And what about the spy we're meeting? You need not worry about Le Chasseur. He is loyal to the Brotherhood. As it happens, he also has friends in both the French and English fleets. And he knows more about what goes on in these parts than you can ever hope to learn. So Liam, what could you tell me about Adewale? You obviously admire the man. Aye. I had the honor of working with him once. I've never known anyone who'd done so much for our cause. It's much more than that. Adewale was already a legend before joining the Brotherhood. He was a pirate. The scourge of the West Indies. 
Rubbing elbows with the likes of Blackbeard, Woods Rogers, and Calico Jack Rackham. Calico who? Oh, read a book, will you? About 20 years ago, Adwali intercepted a Templar convoy and stole a mysterious package. He traveled to Porto France and entrusted it to a woman he believed was loyal to our cause. Let me guess. She wasn't. No, she was, very much so. The package eventually found its way to Francois Macandal, mentor of the Haitian Brotherhood. Well, mates, let's move! There's the mains, half sails. Well, at least we know what happened to it, I guess. Let's get moving. <laughs> Kinda cool There's that they settled that in this game. We don't need to know about the spy glass. There, Captain. An English vessel. And she looks to be in trouble. That's fine indeed. Perhaps we should aid her journey to the bottom of the sea. Now let's not be too hasty. She's full of crown cargo. Take a look through your spyglass and see for yourself. Pretty sight. I say this is a good day to lighten King George's pockets. Be careful. A few shots should be enough to cripple her. Too much damage and she'll go down with all souls. And all spoils. We can board and loot her before the crew knows what to do. Awaiting order, sir! Fire! Shoot the mines she dropped should sting her! We don't need to know about incapacitated ships. Hold your fire! Don't want to sink her. Now's the time, let's board her! All right, let's do this. this is Show them what's for, Captain. Come on, man. The spires are ours. For the more again. Oh, finally, we're close enough. And over the other side. Oh, I thought for sure I was going over. Alright, we need to kill five enemy crew. That should be pretty quick. Take over the ship. And, uh... Well, that's about it, I guess. Alright, kind of the same thing. A little bit of a different scene, but other than that, same thing. Um. Okay. That was a bit different. Well, the sea between here and Anticosti is rough, Captain. We should strengthen the Morgan before going any further. There's a harbor master stationed nearby. Spend our new wealth on improvements. I didn't realize there was a brotherhood in Haiti. Yes. Francois McCandle is their mentor. He gathers many of his assassins from the Maroons. Those are escaped slaves and their children, right? They are. A shame, though. They escaped terrible conditions only to be killed in that earthquake. But... Haiti's a French colony now. Aye, oh, it is. And here... The assassins are helping King Louis, but in Haiti, the French own the slaves who are set free by the assassins. Our struggle is beyond political borders, Shay. Anticosti shouldn't be far. Keep us on course, Captain. All right, if that's their conversation done, we're gonna skip ahead. Is this the place? I see nothing but fishermen and their gear. Aye, per se and fish hand in hand. But it will serve our purposes well enough. The French fish these waters first, but King George is laying claim to more every year. The locals are caught in the middle. Yeah. 
You'd better borrow some coin. Bartering with an empty purse won't get you very far. Reef! Shirt no sail! Loose and... All right, finally, we're here. We can get something done. We go over to talk to the harbor master here on this little island. He's got an assortment of upgrades that we can What's unlock we and uh, purchase. We can also sell some of our cargo as usual. This time is a bit different. We have stone in our uh, inventory, in our stock. Uh, not really sure what that's used for just yet, but I'm sure we'll find out. For now, we'll go to the Morgan's upgrades and see what we could get. We upgrade the hull armor and the broadside cannons. Run bit of business, that. Captain, as well, we should resume course to Anticosti, Captain. Indeed. The chasseur is waiting for us. The sea between here and Anticosti is rough, Captain. The Morrigan seems sturdy enough for the challenge. Stunsels! Let's catch this squad! Not if I hit that rock. Danger's behind us, Jay. All right, let's get going. Floating Ships cargo. ahoy! More fishermen from Perse. Those the gallant and right! Roll the mains! Hold down and... Let out some sail! Enemy ships! They're sinking the fishing boats! You must believe those fishermen strayed into their waters. These cowards must pay! And would you look at that? Standing right in our way, hand to cross it. What say you? We sink every last one of them. For once, I find myself agreeing with you, Shay. Stranger things have happened. Our first little naval battle, for the most part. Just us versus uh, four or five other ships here. They're pretty small, we'll make quick work of them. Cannot breathe deep and enjoy it. The Templars stick to this continent like tar. I won't feel liberated until we pry them off. Seems to me we should just talk to them like men, instead of skulking around. And would you smile and wish them a good day as they lay their boot on your neck? Of course not. They're murdering bastards who want to control the world and everyone in it. Never forget. And we have nothing in common with that, of course. The chasseur should be there. And with any luck, he will know where to find that manuscript. Get closer. Get off the Stop the ship here, Captain. We've arrived at Anticosti Island. Alright, it seems to be a walled-in settlement, or fort, rather. Rum here is terrible. Let me see. That's not rum. It's old Who to be? What the devil is that's whiskey? Well, either the rum or the whiskey here is terrible. Or you heard it 
from the locals, everybody. So, Louis Joseph, how goes the fur train? Uh, not well enough to put beef on my family's plates. If you want beef, raid more British bricks. They're loaded down with barrels. Oh, yes. Their Irish farms yield much meat, don't they? But that is smart management. Far better than the locals could do. Take a look at this. I borrowed these plans from a Royal Navy ship of the line. They are like nothing I have ever seen. Good. We could use some more powerful weapons. Le Chasseur, allow me to present our associate, Sheikh Cormac. Gentlemen, I have news. On this same ship, I spied the manuscript you seek. It was written in an exotic language I did not recognize and was full of drawings, plants, and animals out of an opium dream. Were there no charts? No, no, no maps? No. There may have been some kind of code, but neither I nor the roast beefs could ken Where is the manuscript now? The man who brought it said a man named Washington sent him. I know that name. He's an important Templar, isn't he? He is. Lawrence Washington has great ambitions that Templars have helped fulfill. Shay. Let's return and find him. You, sir, have our thanks. Before leaving Aunt Costa, I wanted to explore and get as much as we could for now. We find a Templar map, it looks like. Had a little Templar symbol on it. This time it says... Yeah, a little treasure map. X marks the spot there. It says, find graves using maps. Obtain artifacts. We're grave robbers now, everybody. Next is another new symbol. It's this little sword, half sword, sword and a stone type thing. But anyways, digging it up, we have found a piece of a viking sword. Collect all the shards. And I guess we'll get a new cool sword. And armor, maybe? Okay, well, that's cool. Uh, there's a couple more things that I haven't... ...seen on a map in any previous games yet. Um, so we'll look at those, and then move along. But not before getting to the viewpoint where a bald eagle majestically flies off we can sync with this viewpoint and get a look at Antacosta. After jumping off the building and into the water, we freeze a little bit, but we also find on the map there's that little stick figure using eagle vision we can unlock the cave painting. Or, this isn't a cave painting, it's just a regular painting. And then we can ex inspect said painting and uh, learn more about it. This one is called Mischief, and uh, the Animus database will let us read all about it. M meanwhile, while the good spirit worked in the light, the evil spirit did mischief within the shadows. Okay, well, there's a buttload of these. Of course, shanties, locations, and to cost the island. The French explorer Jacques Cartier was the first European to discover Anticosti. In 1534, he originally named it Isle de assumption as well as declaring it a strange and cursed island however by the 17th century it was referred to as Anticosti in an attempt to mimic the name by the indigenous people of the area although historically more of a hunting ground than anything else the island was settled in 1680 when King Louis the fourth of France handed it over to the explorer Louis Joliet 
uh, finding himself in possession of the largest privately owned island in the world built a fort for his family there despite its size Anticosti has never been a well populated island likely due to its treacherous treacherous coastline fun fact over 400 shipwrecked them uh, ships wrecked themselves on the rocks and reefs surrounding the island earning it the nickname the cemetery of the gulf signed v Anticosti became a territory of the british empire as part of the treaty of paris that ended the seven years war and officially became part of the providence of quebec in 1867 Lastly, climbing up the walls of this place, we can find this little ribbon icon and see what that's all about. Seems to be some sort of a satchel with a letter. I'm sure we can read the letter. The Front Company. 1746, Mr. Gist, or Gist, maybe? Uh, we are... Basically, just sending letters out filled with secret plans and praying they arrive safely. We need a front company or a series of companies to double as a communications network. Master Johnson in New York has recently been appointed as the Colonel uh, of the Warriors of the Six Nations. Not only is he well established in the local trade, but his relationship with the Mohawk may well benefit us in the future. I suggest we begin friendly overtures immediately. In the meantime, I plan on influencing my in-laws to create a trading company a little closer to home. May the father of understanding guide us, Lawrence Washington of Virginia, the Templars are dumb enough to just write letters and send them into the wind, hoping that they're going to get to a destination? I don't think so. I would say nobody's that dumb, but nowadays, I could see it happening. After we're all done collecting on Anticosti, we can get back to our ship and... Um sail off into the distance. I think we're missing a guy. Well, either way. We didn't like each other anyways, me and that other guy. Our next destination is somewhere that the game calls the River Valley. According to the internet, that's around the Hudson like River Valley area. And they've just renamed it and repurposed it but I don't know yet so hopefully we'll find that information out soon which um Okay, so there it is in the Animus database. I guess we should read about it. Although explorers such as John Cabot noted the Gulf of the St. Lawrence River in the 15th century, the first European explorer to sail up the river itself was Jacques Cartier with the help from some local Iroquois. He misunderstood the Huron Iroquois word for village, Kanata, and began to refer to the larger area north of the river as Kanata. I could see how that would be close enough to get misconstrued. Explorers and fur traders opened up the territory 
French settlements limited the westward expansion of the British, and before long they grew alarmed at the potential scope of French expansionism. The French and British clashed frequently in the colonies, and eventually the Seven Years' War broke out in 1755. You know, it probably took a while just to get from our last location to here. Our last location was up in Canada somewhere, and now we're in on the Hudson River. Uh, let's see, where are we at exactly? Don't know. Progress further in the story to unlock this activity. What activity did I walk by? Okay. Whatever. Anyways, we can head on over to our next mission. After making our way a little bit more inland, we can go up some stairs and find our objective waiting for us. Templars desire to understand the nature of these artifacts. Their spies have called upon many doctors and other learned people in New York. They have also approached many tribes with questions. Yeah, they've been showing that manuscript far and wide. No one can read the strange writing or understand the images. We do have a name, though. We learned that Lawrence Washington sent out the manuscript. Lawrence Washington. Businessman, Virginian politician, and high-ranking Templar. Why, uh, yes. I recently heard he was back from the West Indies. One of my men saw his major domo pick up a strange package. Then that package will be delivered to him promptly. Shay, figure out what it is and find Washington. And when you do, learn all you can. I'll prepare the Morrigan. Well, if we've any luck, that ship will lead us right to him. I make my own luck, Liam. And Washington is running out of his. Aye. There she is! All right, man. It's time Don't to be quiet. Clue up Lawrence Washington is a powerful businessman, a slave Stone owner, cap. and a leading temple. We lost track of him about a year ago. I recently learned he was in Barbados, but I haven't been able to confirm that. Now. Now you think he had something to do with the theft of the artifacts, don't you? I wouldn't put it past him. Haiti's a short voyage from Barbados, and his return to the colony certainly coincides with the arrival of the artifacts. We cannot let the Templars get control of these colonies. Whatever happens, Lawrence Washington must not survive. I'll make sure he does it. Blockade, Captain! But this won't do. Shay, you must follow that ship on land. I'll do that. Bring the Morrigan around another way. I can track that package and find Washington. Harry, get straight to land, Captain. Blues up. These are sticks. Blue up top. Sub blockade. And remember what I said, Shay. Washington must die. That's what we do, baby. All right. We can take a little dive and make our way on the uh, little path that we're given to follow here up to the ship or our next destination. So we'll just skip this part. And getting up here, we see our objective. And we are at Mount Vernon. I think that's what it was said. Uh, the one in New York, not the one in Washington. But let's read about it. See what it has to say. John Washington, great grandfather to Lawrence and George, bought the land in 1674 with his friend Nicholas Spencer. The acreage was then referred to by its native name Epsowason. Oops. Um, in 1690, the heirs of Washington and Spencer split the land, leaving the Washingtons with the, por uh, the portion that ran along Little Hudson Creek. 
Court. Lawrence Washington's father, Augustine, renamed it Little Hunting Creek in 1738, Lawrence returned from school in England and began to oversee the family's tobacco plantation. When he inherited the estate, he renamed it Mount Vernon in honor of Vice Admiral Edward Vernon, who was his commanding officer in the Royal Navy. When his half-brother George inherited the property, he kept the name. Interesting bit that. All right, let's uh, loot the package. And of course, we can see that we are in a restricted area, so we have to watch out for all the red coats, the lobster backs walking around. Not after too long, I was spotted and then had to hide from the police. And uh, but finally, we made it to here, and here we go. What's this? Rifle. You there? Stay. Where? You. How can that be? It makes no sound. Thanks for the present, Master Washington. Okay, so we got ourselves an air rifle, and it's essentially the blow dart gun, or uh, blow dart pipe, whatever you prefer. So I don't think we... Oh, it says something about grenades. Darts and grenades. What? And firecrackers? This thing is crazy. This is a strange surprise. Not quite what I was expecting. Now I must find Washington and interrogate him. Yes, Shay, let's. Before getting to Mr. Washington, we end up uh, getting sidetracked uh, by the minimap. There's a letter here on the ground, so we can go ahead and open that and read it while we're here. Arranged marriage, 1748, Grand Master Birch. My informants in Port au Prince. Tell me that Mackandall shares your interest in relics. From the first civilization, he collects them. There were whispers of something called the Heart of the Brotherhood. A fragment of a large relic that was stolen by a slaved woman named Jan who had ties to uh, members of his brotherhood. Jan was sold to a merchant last year, but as luck would have it, that merchant is Felipe Oliver de Grand Pre, who owns a rival business company here in New Orleans. If you can use your influence in the world of economics to dampen his financial prospects i believe that i can secure a relationship through marriage and the promise of renowned stability in his business as always i appreciate your faith in me may the father of understanding guide you madeline de l'isle of new orleans while I was collecting everything on the island, we kind of stumbled into our next objective. I need to get to Washington first. Then I'll worry about the artifacts. For now, I think we can continue to uh, get our bearings and collect what else we can before continuing on. So up here we have our synchronization point for the area. Let's have at it. This is a nice one. It's got some music and the fireworks back there. Once we can see them again. There they are. Look at that. How nice. Well, that was super far away. Alright. Here we are in the garden. The old garden. 
and we're going to have to make it through here, hopefully without getting detected, and visit Mr. Lawrence. Alright, so I was detected almost immediately after that, but now we can, without getting detected, we can uh, continue on here. Brother, are you sure you shouldn't be in bed? I am fine, George. Be a good host for my sake. Go to the wine cellar and get something special for our guests. I will. Gentlemen. <coughs> My brother is a bright spot in a troubled land. If I may make one request before I depart this life, please leave him in peace. He should have nothing to do with the troubles of the Templar cause. We all respect that sentiment, sir. You have my thanks, gentlemen. Master Smith, are you ready to leave on your voyage? Aye, sir. I shall return with answers. Master Wardrop, are you likewise engaged with the manuscript? Yes, sir. We will soon know its meaning. Then I bid you take your leave. <laughs> Washington can barely stand on his own two feet. Better be right about him, Liam. Because I'm about to murder a dying man. That little chipmunk noise was my mic messing up. Don't know what that was all about, but I fixed it. Um... Yeah, we need to look at George Washington on the databases and get to Lawrence here without being detected and uh, end him of his sickness and misery. Lawrence has taken a break from the party. Now's our chance to get him. You are too late, assassin. It's never too late to ruin Templar plans, Master Washington. <coughs> But my plans are already in motion. Even leading you here <coughs> has given my allies time to escape. <coughs> Thank you for making my end a quick one. And thank you for revealing your master plan, you scheming snake. I mean, was it really his master plan? Come on, Shay. God damn it. Better hurry. Liam, I hope you brought the ship around. Alright, let's exit the area. Is that a ship, Mortar? That's not Spartan! Uh-oh, someone's mortaring the area. Or mortaring my ship? What? How can you even see that? I can't see that. Either way, we gotta get back to the ship. Oh, they're trying to mortar us. Like the ship. He should have said that when he got over here. I was really confused about it. Alright, let's go. We're getting destroyed. Come on, Liam. I feel like these explosions are set up. I don't know where we're going, but we're getting there. Shoot some fire barrels or something. Don't allow them to follow. See, now fire barrels would be very useful because we're on a river. But um, in the last game, I felt that I underused them. In an area like this where it's narrow, I think they'd be nice to use. But in the open water like the last game, not great. Lawrence Washington is dead. You look disappointed. The sickly way that man looks. He would have been dead in a month anyway. And two other Templars got away. 
They're looking into the manuscript and box. Did they have the artifacts? I don't know. Perhaps. I can't be sure. Then you did what was right by the Brotherhood. We'll find the objects later. Cheer up, Shane. It's a rare day we can sow such chaos among the Templars. Perhaps. But to hear Washington speak, it didn't sound like they'd be too put out by the loss. Well, that's what he wants you to think. Yeah, them scheming Templars. The memory appears to be fragmented. How much time has passed? A few months, I think. That virus is cutting off our access to complete memories. The readable, but messy. The Seven Years' War will soon break out in the colonies. Focus on assassin interference. We'll do our best. Won't we, numbskull? Don't call me that. Close down! Man your shit! So grim about the homestead now that Miss Abigail and little Connor have passed. Aye. I've seen Achilles crying. Why shouldn't he? It's just that. He doesn't look sad. He looks furious. It's unsettling. He's struggling with the loss. We all are. I know. But it's been months, and we've done little but search for this blasted manuscript and box. The Chasseur has a lead on the box. We need him and Chevalier in St. John's. Chevalier too? No hope of cheering me up, then. When Achilles said whoever had the artifacts could access sites of great power, what did he mean? I'm not sure I understand it myself, Shay. I had a long talk with Adewale about that. He believes the box can be activated to, well, project words or images. Like a magic lantern? What do you mean? You know the magic lantern shows Father Connolly put on in the church basement? The box had a candle in it, I think. He put these little glass plates in front. Then we'd see the images projected on the wall like cathedrals in Rome, bright and near as big as life. Ah, yeah. I suppose it is. Except that it interprets the strange language of the manuscript, too. If the plate were of a banner in Latin, we'd see it in English. How is that possible? Who knows? I fear we might never truly understand how any of the pieces of Eden work. Where in the world has the most beautiful girls? I suppose it depends on your vision of beauty. A damsel from Corfu and one from Oslo are as different as chalk and cheese, but... Both could be lovely. You see, opinions like that give a man a reputation for wisdom. Yeah, thank you. I would have just said Havana. The girls there have lusty buttocks and bosoms and feel no shame in putting them on display. But that's no slight against our lasses from home. I suppose. I think Galway has the nicest ones. Fair and modest. Always willing to spot you a penny for an ale. Don't say. Then there's the maids I met in this. Destined for the convent they were. Dark-eyed and kindly dispositioned. If only I'd spoke Portuguese. Not that we spent much of our nights talking. We're almost there, Captain. Le Chasseur will be expecting us. And Chevalier. That's a small price to pay for a lead in the precursor box. There's a lot going on here. Since it's the start of the war soon. But uh, our objective is right around the corner, so let's make it there. All right, we have made it. Let's see where we're at exactly here. All right, Shay, let's disembark. St. John's. And there's plenty to collect. So maybe perhaps before we start, we'll collect some items. All this crap on the map. But before any of that happens, we should get our bearings and synchronize with this viewpoint. Well, that was a nice one. 
Let us continue on near to the hay bale wagon or whatever we jumped into. We can find another letter. We can read up on it. And also probably look at uh, George Washington, which we had overlooked before. Uh, audition, 1747. Mademoiselle Maraline de Lisle. Your masterful handling of your father's business has not escaped our notice. Your elevation into the upper crust of New Orleans society has not escaped our notice. Your discovery of our order hiding beneath the skin of the world has not escaped our notice. You have our attention. We are well aware of your desire to join our ranks. Here then is our offer. We believe there is something of immense value beneath the ancient Mayan stones of the Yucatan Peninsula. Our endeavor will require large quantities of raw materials, including a constant supply of disposable labor. If your cunning can supply our needs, we will see to it that your power and influence is not limited to the paltry colony of your birth. By receiving this letter, you have already agreed to our demands. Stand ready for further instructions. May the Father of Understanding guide you. Mm, Magdalene Levesqua. So basically she was forced. If she didn't want to do that stuff, since she got the letter, and she's in. Alright, born in 1692, died unknown. We're looking at George Washington. Born to enslaved parents in Trinidad. Uh, what? Okay, this isn't George Washington. Why are we reading about Ottawale? Uh, born 1730. I was on George Washington. Did you see that? Uh, born 1732, died 1799. George Washington was born in Virginia to a family of moderately prosperous tobacco planters. When Washington's father died, his older half-brother Lawrence became his role model. Lawrence married Anne Fairfax, whose father, Colonel William Fairfax, uh, exerted a great influence on George Washington. The Fairfax family helped launch George Washington's career as a government surveyor. Yeah, this story is a bit different than Ottawale's. I, I feel like it, it... It was highlighted on George. I don't know why it did that. This game's messed up. In 1751, George traveled to Barbados with Lawrence, who suffered from tuberculosis. George caught a minor case of smallpox, which sickened and scarred him, but saved him from worse disease later in life. A year later, Lawrence returned from the tropics to Virginia, where he died, leaving George in control of the family plantation. Washington inherited his brother's portion as adjutant and became a major in the army in 1754. Militiamen under his command ambushed a French patrol who were encroaching a nearby fort, and it became the first battle of the French and Indian War. Later that same year, Washington surrendered to the French at the Battle of Fort Necessity, but mistakenly signed a document saying their commander was assassinated. Fun fact, Washington's allies fired first and without provocation. This guy was cursed from the get-go, signed V. There's a couple others we can look at here. Jack Weeks, born 1723. 
Uh, don't know when he died. Jack Weeks was born in Albany to a couple who escaped slavery in Virginia. They taught him to be independent and to take advantage of any opportunity to better himself. At the age of 10, Weeks began to work as a pickpocket and a thief at local markets. Weeks attempted to pick the pocket of explorer and Templar Christopher just, just caught him in the act but was so impressed by the boy's cheeky attitude that he hired him as an errand boy, just took him on his travels and taught him about trade and how to mimic people of various social statuses and origins. Uh, in 1750, Gist was hired to explore the land west of the colonies and so introduced Weeks to George Monroe. Gist uh, suggested the officer should take the young man on as his assistant. Weeks impressed Monroe with his cleverness and adaptability. Monroe taught Weeks about the Templars and their goals. Weeks admired Monroe's intellect and agreed with the Templar philosophy, philosophy of crowd control. When Gist joined the Templar Order in 1751, Monroe agreed to induct Jack Weeks as well. Next we have James Wardrop, born C. 1705 died 1754. James Wardrop was born to a Templar family in the American colonies. He followed his father's footsteps and was in inducted into the Templar order in 1720. James' uh, main task was to secure land and wealth for the Templar order. Though the Templars were not yet officially established in the American colonies, men like Wardrop were slowly but surely setting things in motion. In 1744, he began to build a trade network for the order that ran from the colonies to the West Indies. By 1750, he was working with Christopher Gist, to acquire land in North America, Wardrop endeavored to keep the fledgling American colonies loyal to the British government, but was not uh, above using his position to line his own pockets. Next up, we have Sam Smith. Oh yeah, I forgot. Lawrence Washington, born 1718, died 1752, was born in Virginia and was a mentor of sorts to his more famous half-brother, George. Lawrence was educated in England, where he was recruited into the Templar Order by Grand Master Reginald Birch. Lawrence returned to Virginia in 1738 to oversee his father's plantation on the Potomac River and also to seek out precursor relics. In 1739, the British Parliament created an infantry for its American colonies to be used in their conflict against Spain in the West Indies. Lawrence Washington arrived in Jamaica in 1741 and saw action in expeditions against Artegana, New Ganda, Cuba, and Panama. Many casualties in these conflicts were the result of disease rather than violence. Because he arrived in the tropics early, he managed to survive fevers that decimated the other American colonists. Upon his return to the American colonies, Washington became a militia commander at the rank of major. Washington married Anne Fairfax in 1743. In 1747, he, his father-in-law, and other prominent businessmen began to work together with the goal of opening trade to the American interior. 
Lawrence was diagnosed with tuberculosis and traveled to Barbados with his younger brother George in an attempt to help his health. George caught a minor case of smallpox and Lawrence used the opportunity to travel to Port-au-Prince on Templar business. Lawrence returned to his Mount Vernon home in July of 1752 where he died from his disease. His younger brother George eventually inherited and took over management of Mount Vernon Plantation. Okay, now next up we can read about Samuel Smith. Born and died unknown, there are virtually no details of Sam Smith's life. We suspect that he was born in Virginia and showed some skill as a sailor. He was a treasurer for one of Lawrence Washington's businesses and by extension the Templar Order. After Washington's death, he answered to James Wardrop. I wonder if this is why he was hired. No one really knew him and no one would really miss him. Uh, he was completely expendable, signed V. Agent DaCosta, you are all completely expendable, O.B. Wow, what a guy. Why, why would you say that to your people? Alright, next we have locations, the North Atlantic. While ancient Norse settlements have been found in Newfoundland and other parts of North America, it was not until Christopher Columbo's famous voyage in 1492, that's Christopher Columbus, that there was any significant contact across the Atlantic Ocean. The European powers raced to colonize the Americas. Abstergo insists on spelling Christopher Columbus like that. It has something to do with Subject 17, but beyond that I don't know. It's maddening, signed V. The North Atlantic, with its colder climate, made this process difficult. The cold winters, as well as the resistance of indigenous people, resulted in the failure of many early European settlements. By the 18th century, however, colonies were well established and trading routes across the ocean were common. Even so, the most northerly regions were still relatively unexplored, with ice blocking the way of even the most adventurous explorers. Next up, we find a little cross deal. We can look at it in Eagle Vision. Perhaps one more time? Okay, and then it leads us somewhere else. Okay, let's go and find this thing. It's just up the cliff, not too far away. We can dig up whatever this thing is. Templar crosses are buried around the world. Uncover them all to gain access to Sir Gunn's armaments, I think it said. Um, okay, we will do that. Next up, we come across another wall painting. Using Eagle Vision, this one shows a little blue guy and a little red guy. And we can go ahead and read about that. This one's Stubbornness. The good spirit saw the mischief that his brother did and knew that even his help would not be enough. He told his brother to stop making trouble, but the evil spirit refused. And with that, we are going to actually end this episode here, since it is getting close to an hour. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. We will start right back up with our next main objective on the next episode. Please do comment uh, about whatever you have on your mind maybe about the game maybe about something you heard me say just anything at all comment 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 I'd like to respond to those comments if you enjoyed the video please give her a like if you didn't enjoy give her a dislike but comment tell me why you didn't like it you know constructive criticism is good and all that 
Tell me if you want to see something on these games. Whether it's a guide or, you know, just whatever. And, uh, have a good rest of your day, night, whatever it might be for you. We will see you on the next episode. Bye for now. Don't mind me, guys. I'm heading out. Do not know what I would have done without you, kind sir. Yeah, thanks. Now he wants to fight. Do you see him walk into the corner? Idiot.